In this video, we will talk about matching given functions with given graphs. So I want to do an example where I want to match the functions in part A, B, and C with one of the below graphs. So there are four graphs that are given here. Three functions, so each one of the functions should match up with one of these graphs. So that means one of the graphs is kind of extraneous. It doesn't match up with any of these functions. So I first want to give you the opportunity to try this. So pause the video for about three minutes to try this on your own first. This is extra important in this section because 3D geometry is a really new topic for us. So it's important to get that practice now before you get to things like even trying the homework problems. So you've at least gone through that process once. Four, three, two, one, pause that video. Pause it for three minutes to really try this on your own first. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused the video for about three minutes to try this on your own. And I didn't mention this before, but we want to be able to do this without using just like graphing software or GeoGebra, because that would kind of defeat the purpose. Mostly, I want us to be able to use the concepts that we've talked about to, to identify what each uh, graph for these functions should look like. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we do this without a calculator? What are some of the things that we've talked about? Well, one thing that we've talked about is intercepts and how to find them. So let's maybe check the intercepts and see if that lets us use some process of elimination. Inter, whoops. Started writing interprets, intercepts. So let's do it for the function in A first. So if I do the Z intercept for the function in A, let's see, can I zoom out enough where I can see it? Might be too much, but let's try. Okay, there, let's see if we can do this. So we would get that Z equals, so remember I can write a Z on the left hand side here. We get z equals, and for the z intercepts, I need to plug in 0 for the x and for the y. So we get 4 times 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 3. So that equals, it simplifies to 3. And based off of the graphs, ah, you know what? I forgot to say something earlier. <laughs> okay, so there's one of these functions that I can actually identify very quickly, and it's part b. Because part b is a function that we've seen before. I can rewrite this as z equals 6 minus 2i. And this is a linear function. So as a 3D graph, this means its graph should be a plane, which means it's got to be 1. So this needs to be graph 1. So I'm going to highlight those to match them up. So b should match up with 1. Okay, so recognizing linear functions can be really helpful in matching questions because I know the graph should be a plane. Okay, so let's get back to checking intercepts. We still need to be able to match A and C, and we are looking at A right now. So I know that the Z intercept of the function in A should be 3. And I see that graph 2 doesn't even have a Z intercept at all. So it's definitely not 2. Definitely not 2. But maybe it's graph 3, maybe it's graph 4. They both look like they have a positive z-intercept. So graph 3 looks like, a, like an upward-facing parabolic bowl, whereas 4 kind of looks like the top of a semicircle here. These dashed lines that kind of go through the middle of it are just there for reference. All righty, so let's do the other intercepts. So other intercepts. Okay, so let's do x-intercept. And for the x-intercept, I'm going to need to set z equal to 0 and the y equal to 0. So we'll get 0 equals 4x squared plus y squared plus 3. And if we simplify this and rearrange, we'll get negative 3 fourths equals x squared. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So it's just a little bit easier to write it when it's more zoomed in. All right, so I have x squared equals to a negative number. And I can see that this has no solution. 
because something squared is not allowed to be a negative number. Something squared, if I, real, if I square a real number, is always going to be non-negative. I could also see that if I square rooted both sides, if I square rooted both sides, I would get a square root of a negative number, which would be undefined. And that would tell me that there's no solution. So I tried to find x-intercepts, I got no solution, which means there are no x-intercepts. For y-intercepts, it's really similar to what we did for z-intercepts and x-intercepts. So I'm going to skip the work. I'm going to put a dot, dot, dot. Although if this is a homework question, you should definitely show it. So similarly, if we work it out, it turns out there are no y-intercepts as well. And looking at my graphs for 3 and 4, it seems like it could be either of those. Both of those graphs don't have x-intercepts, and both of them don't have y-intercepts. Because even with the semi, this upside-down sphere shape, it looks like it's sort of lifted above the xy plane. Like the whole thing seems to have its base somewhere here on the positive z-axis. The base seems to be going through this positive z-coordinate. Okay, let's find the intercepts for function c now. So for function c, let's do z-intercepts first. We'd plug in 0 for x and y and get z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, so 4 minus 0, minus y squared, so minus 0, and then plus 1. So square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's got the same z-intercept as a did, so, so far I can't really use any process of elimination. Okay, let's do other intercepts. So let's do x-intercept. So for this, we'll set 0 for equal to z and for y. So we get 0 plugged in for z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared, which will give us 0, plus 1. So if I rearrange this and move the 1 over, we get negative 1 equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. And with this, right away, we can actually see that this is no solution. And that's because a square root can't output a negative number. So no matter what I plug into the square root, it's impossible to get a negative number out, like negative 1. So not only can I not plug a negative number into a square root, I'm not allowed to get a negative one out. So that lets me say the answer right away without doing more work here. So no solution, which means there are no x-intercepts. Y-intercepts. Again, I'm going to skip the work here because it's really similar. I'm just going to say similarly, there are no y-intercepts either, just like the other function, just like part a. So at this point we know that a and c, my remaining functions, match with either 3 or 4, graphs 3 or 4. Using the intercepts in this particular example wasn't useful. Uh, in distinguishing which one of those graphs it was. In other examples, they can help me uh, narrow it down, but here it didn't. Okay, so what can we try next? Well, we've also talked about level curves. So maybe next, ooh, let's try drawing some level curves for those two functions and see if that helps us. So I'm gonna go back to the graphs to help me decide well, what level curve to try. So one of the things that I notice about graphs 3 and 4 is, with 4, um, this upside down sphere is kind of limited on how high up along the z-axis it goes. It has this point at the top, and it never gets higher than that. Whereas with the parabolic bowl, it goes infinitely high. So one thing that I'm thinking of when I see that is, maybe let me try to slice it by a really high plane, like z equals some really high positive number. Because it shouldn't slice graph 4, but it should slice graph 3. So this is something we might have to play around with, but so maybe 
let's slice by the plane z equals 10. So this is a plane. So I'm going to slice both a and c by this plane. So if I do for a, we'd plug in 10 for the z. We get 10 equals 4x squared plus y squared plus 3. And if I rearrange this to move the 3 over, we get 7 equals 4x squared plus y squared. And we've seen an equation like this before at the end of the last video when we did a review of ellipses and hyperbolas. So pause the video for 30 seconds without looking back at your notes or the previous video. See if you can identify what this shape is. Ellipse or hyperbola? Four, three, two, one. Pause the video. Pause it for 30 seconds and see if you can identify that. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for about 30 seconds. So this one is an ellipse. So this one ends up being an ellipse. So now let's do part C. Let's plug in 10 for Z. So we'll get 10 equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared plus 1. So I can move the 1 over and get 9 equals the square root because we need to isolate the root first. So now I can square both sides. And if I did that, I would get 81 equals on the right hand side we get 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And as before, let's get all the variables on one side first. So let's move the variables to the left. So they become positive x squared plus y squared. And then I'll move 81 to the right to get negative 77. So what shape does this graph have? Do a real quick pause to try that. I'm not going to count it down. I'm going to trust that you're going to pause it for about 30 seconds to think about this. This is one we can just logic out. All right, and now I'm going to talk about it. So this is no solution because x squared plus y squared is non-negative. It's greater than or equal to zero because when you square something, when you square a real number, it's going to be non-negative. So when you add two non-negative numbers, definitely going to be non-negative, so it can't be equal to negative 77. Okay, so in terms of our graphs, we now can identify well, which one goes with which one. Because we said by looking at the graphs that if I picked a high enough value for z, it shouldn't intersect graph 4. But it should intersect graph 3. And if I look at what happened here, it did intersect graph A in an ellipse, but the plane z equals 10 did not intersect graph, or sorry, function C. So thus, function A matches with the parabolic bowl shape. So that was with graph 3 and C, the square root function here, with these x squared and y squared inside of it, matches with graph 4. So I'm just going to highlight that. So back with our graphs, let's zoom it out here. So let's see, we said that graph A matched with this parabolic bowl, that was three, and C matched with this graph here. Alrighty, so in terms of our goals, we have finished our final goal, which was doing an example where we match given functions to given graphs in 3D space. And this really tied a lot of what we've talked about together. Finding intercepts, drawing level curves, even the review that we did about ellipses and hyperbolas. But being able to reason out why a given function matches with the given graph is what I care most that you take away from this video.